Hey everyone, my name is Derek Henry and in this week's video blog post we're going to talk about the value of being organized. Now, you might not know anybody who has an office or a desk that looks quite this messy. That's one of the silver linings from COVID is that things are a lot more digital these days. But every once in a while you still see it. Way back in the day I used to have a colleague that had a desk that looked quite a bit like this. It wasn't flowing out of the wall like that, but there were stacks of paper everywhere and amazingly he seemed to know where everything was. Now, as we know, digital files can be a lot easier to find and to keep up with and makes us better organized, at least in appearance, but it can somehow sometimes get out of control just as well. Now, there are a lot of benefits to being organized. We're going to start with a big one. It's based on a research project McKinsey did. They found the average person spends well over 400 hours a year looking for stuff for information. Could be your keys, could be your wallet, could be the remote control, could be digital things like emails or Excel files or looking stuff up on the web constantly. This is a big time opportunity to work more efficiently. So obviously that's one of the very biggest benefits of doing this. We'll talk about a few more, some approaches and some hacks at the end. Now, obviously that, that stat about saving time, that's a huge one. How many times have you given up on looking for something only to rebuild it or go buy another one? So there's time not just in the searching that you save, there's time in the replacement, assuming that you might get to that, only to find a thing after you've replaced it, which in turn can also save you money. Now time is money, so if you have to rebuild something, well, there's an aspect to that that means it's opportunity cost. So saving money, that's another reason. Keeps you ready. How many times have you gone searching for something at the last minute when you're frantic and you don't have that time to begin with? When you are organized and things are where you expect them to be, you're always ready and you're not in a panic. And that is a really, really valuable trait. It's also good for your reputation. If you walked into somebody's office and it looked like that, you might not ever come back. You might not trust them. You might move on and, and work with somebody else, right? So, you know, when you can take care of your own stuff, people start to trust you with theirs, whether it's digital or physical. It's just more to deal with. The more stuff you have to keep organized, the, the more clutter in your life, the more things you hang on to, even though you don't need them, that's just more to maintain, that's just more to search through. It makes it exponentially more time consuming, more stuff you have to look through, right? It also keeps you from missing out. Now, this is more from the calendar perspective. I see a lot of people who have no organization to their calendar whatsoever, and they're living kind of on um, the reactive approach. They end up missing things, maybe they forget to pick up their kids. You know, it, it really helps to have a calendar that's organized. So, how do you do these things? Well, first of all, take it more seriously. And that's just to start, like being organized, take it more seriously. Watch what people who are really organized tend to do. Keep things where it makes sense to keep them, right? Think about this stuff constantly and attack it just a little bit at a time. So one of the things that bugs me quite a bit is when somebody moves something and they don't put it back in the place it was, especially tools. I hate that. Now I'm guilty sometimes too, but it really frustrates me when other people don't put stuff back where I'm looking for it, then it's a scramble. And oh, by the way, if you just ask somebody, they could have told you. So if it, especially if it's somebody else's, Put it back where you found it. Now, sometimes you might um, put things not necessarily all together, like all the tools. Scissors is a great example. We probably have three or four pairs all over the house because then it's convenient. The bathroom, the kitchen, the office, the garage, there's a pair all over the place because it's such a constant thing that we use. Measuring tape is another great example. So work with, take an approach that works for you. You know, not somebody else's organization process and system might not be the best for you, but take it seriously and, you know, mimic what works and inconsistency is obviously key. Another good approach is if you don't use something, get rid of it. If you haven't used it in a year, maybe three years, maybe five years, you know, come up with a reasonable baseline for yourself, get rid of it. One of the people that um, I follow sometimes online says, if you wouldn't take it with you if you were moving to another country, probably should get rid of it. That works pretty well. Another friend likes to every year, any hangers they have, or any clothes they haven't used based on turning the, the hanger around, they get rid of them. It's like an annual um, process that they do, the, the big purge, right? The other thing is don't buy it in the first place. If you don't need something, if the chances are very remote, you're not gonna need it, don't buy it, and guess what? That's less to keep organized. Another thing from, the, from an information perspective is just writing things down. Our brains are not wired to remember everything. Hardly anybody really works that way. There are exceptions, but most people don't. If you have a good thought, Write it down. Keeping a notepad handy, send an email to yourself, use notes in your phone. There's so many ways to do that and then revisit them and organize those notes, distill them and take action on them. And that, that works really, really well. And then lastly, put everything in your calendar. So from the time perspective, remember time is money in most cases. Put everything that you can. 
obviously all the meetings you're going to have, all the doctor's appointments, all the kids' activities, put everything in there. Even if you're not involved, put it in there as an FYI so that you know. Somebody might ask you, like, hey, when is that going to happen? Even though you're going to have nothing to do with it, you might be out of town, you can still answer the question. Now, that might take a lot of time, so we'll teach you a time hack that can get that done very efficiently. Now, first of all, a couple of time hacks are to help you find things digitally. Now, this next, this first one here, I've taken this approach. I don't know when I stumbled on it. It was many years ago. It was almost by accident, but it works really, really well. When you put a really good descriptive name, I'm not talking like a full sentence, but I'm not talking one word, put in something that has the time context, that has the category, that has the people or whatever it might be, like the prefix in this file, that tends to work really well for searching. And then at the end, what I like to do is put a date of the date that I built the file or first saved it. Now the format of this date is very important. Okay, so the very first part, obviously succinct but descriptive. And then the second part here, Put that consistent format, the four digit year, dash two digit month, dash two digit day. Why is that important? One, that's how databases work. That's just a good format. And I'm hoping someday the whole world agrees that's the way dates should be stored because it sorts nicely and it's just the way databases work. But here's an even better reason. If you don't remember anything about a file, but you remember around roughly when you worked on it, search for the four digit year, dash a two digit month. If you don't find it, try the previous month and then the next month and kind of ping pong back and forth and guess what you will find it eventually usually within 30 to 60 seconds i've seen people search for a file for 30 to 60 minutes give up and rebuild it and then they find it as they're kind of saving that new file somewhere else it's kind of ridiculous right if you take this approach it works so well or something like it now another way is to use autocomplete searching so what i like to do this is a tool that i actually built in the accelerate add-in when you run it with the, with the shortcut Control shift o it's going to show you a search box. And you can search for things very quickly. Now, with the third thing I'm going to show you, we're going to search for a quick file. Okay, I want to look for a file that has a school district schedule. Look at this, I found that file in just a couple of seconds. It shows you the folder path and the file name at the bottom, it shows you when it was last updated, file size, just so you know it's the right one. You can change the search date range if you want, or the number of months. Press enter with the whole file path and there you go. Very easy to find things. So whether you want to use that tool or something else, use search suggest. It is an amazing way to search. It saves a ton of time. Now the third time hack, remember, keep everything in your calendar. Well, that might be daunting. This is a great approach to doing that. This right here is another macro in the Accelerate add-in where you can import things in bulk to your calendar. So this is just a list. When you first run the macro, it's going to set up this sheet where you can fill in the data. The idea is you've got formulas, you've got copy paste, find, replace, filtering, all the things you love about Excel to create a list very efficiently. What's great about this one though is that I've built it to be reused. So here's the list of all the dates. There's a holiday list. And remember school districts tend to have those same holidays each year. You just got to change what date they are. So you can maybe add one or minus one or whatever. Integrate those in here so there's the date, the yellow one is the one I enter, everything else is linked back to that, and then the dismissal days, and is there school or not, and is it an A or B block day, and all the different aspects of this. I was able to build this, look how many appointments are in here, 350, and then on top of this, we added all the kids' activities each week. They may not recur on exactly the same date or time or location, so that's why I can't use recurrences, but this is a great way to add, to edit, or delete in bulk, or to just export it so we can share it. So hopefully you found these tips helpful. Organization is valuable. Remember, it's a time thing, if nothing else, but it'll build your reputation. It'll just keep you ready all the time. And if, when you reduce stress, I mean, come on, that's one of the biggest reasons why people do things. It's just such a pain when you're not organized. So hope you found this helpful. If you know somebody in need of better organization, please share with them. If you like this, please give us a, a shout on that. Follow, repost, all the things. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day.